Amen. Yes. Go to hell because you say so. No, because God, God, God says so. No, God. It's the Bible says so. God forgives. You're he does forgive. God forgives. Fuck you. But that's only if you I accept the you. blood of Christ. My friend, why are you so angry? You see, this because is what happens. Me well, that. Well, that's fine. There is brotherly love. You are a fuck up. You're chastising all of it and shaming. No, sir. Fuck if you were listening, you heard that I said all of us have fallen short. I'll drink your fucking food. You see, this is what happens, guys. Demons get exposed by the word of Christ. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Toronto. How are you guys doing? My name is David Hammond. I'm part of a church called Grace Missionary Baptist Church. And now, if you guys have been here, like these cops have, there have been, you know, quite a few people, which is completely fine, no problem with that. You guys know that the gospel message definitely ruffles feathers. It triggers a lot of people. And the reason for that, guys, is because it is the truth. You see, in the Bible, it says that condemnation is this, that light has come into the world, but men have chosen darkness because their deeds were evil. You see, the Bible splits you open, myself included, all of us. There is no other book, there is no other prophet, there is no other man who is able to cut you open. Soul and spirit. My friends, that is the name of Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. For there was a man 2,000 years ago that came, fulfilled all 613 Mosaic laws, 218, never sinned once, and shed his perfect blood for all of us. Now I know this sounds very controversial it sounds out there it doesn't sound real but the reason we know it's real is because in the bible it states that god has wrote his law into all of our hearts you see every single individual here believes in god and we know this through our conscience we have an intuitive right and wrong through our morality but individuals unfortunately in this area you guys are very apathetic you no longer care and the reason for that is because of wealth pride, money, leaning on your own understanding. You see in the Bible it says that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom. The reason for that is because why would I accept Christ? Why would I accept this quote-unquote fairy tale if I can lean on my own understanding? I'm going to heaven. You know, I believed growing up that everyone would go to heaven, right? All you had to do is maybe say a quick little prayer, go to church once or twice a year, and you're good to go. But the reality is in the Bible it states that no man is good but the Father. And all of us have fallen and show the glory of God. Amen. Do you understand? Every one of us are sinners. In 1 John 1, 8, it says, if a man says he's without sin, then he's a liar. The truth is not in him. Now, earlier we had a man you know, he was very triggered by the preaching. And again, this is because the Bible cuts us open, right? If he didn't care, he would just keep it moving. But he stuck around for half an hour. And I need to make this very clear, my friends. We love all individuals. As Christians, we are sinners just like you guys. You know, a lot of times it looks like for whatever reason, we prop ourselves up. But my friends, that's merely because in Mark 16, 15, it tells us, it commands us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations. We are on the same playing field. For in the Bible, it states that if a man breaks even one law, he's guilty of all of them. Right? But what we're here to tell you guys is 2,000 years ago, there was a man named Christ Jesus who fulfilled all 613 Mosaic laws, never sinned once, and because of his perfect blood that was shed, fulfilling over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament, we now have a chance of entering heaven with him as long as we repent, as long as we accept him, take on his blood. What does this mean? How do we do this? Well, we first must understand. You want to come closer? Maybe just move a little bit? Yeah, that's good. Like right there. We first must understand that we are all worthy of damnation. Now, I know this is a hard message to, to swallow, guys, because our liberal leftist Western society tells us that we are all our own gods. You can change your gender, become a cat, a dog, a woman tomorrow, a man the next. And again, we don't say this out of hate. In fact, we love all individuals. But my friend, you must understand that you are a sinner worthy of hell. For in the Bible, it states that all men have fallen short from the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Now, let me ask you something. You may think you're not a sinner, but have you ever lied before? Have you ever looked at a man or a woman with lust? Are you living in homosexuality? Like those two ladies over there? You see, the reality is, unfortunately, these are all sins in the eyes of God. We didn't make up these rules. I'm a wretched, wicked sinner, just like all of you guys. But you see, the difference is, is I've acknowledged that. And through that, I've now taken on the blood of Christ. 
My sins are now expiated because of him. There is nothing I could have done. This isn't Catholicism, Islam, Hinduism, where I have to work my way into salvation. Where if I just pray enough times, I do enough good deeds, hopefully at the end of life, it'll just get eradicated. No, my friends. For in the Bible it states that our righteousness, our, our works, I should say, are equivalent to filthy rags. There is no amount of work you can do. There is no amount of prayers you can pray on a sweaty, stinking mat. Do you understand? There's no mantras you can say. There's no effeminate yoga studio that you can just go to for a monthly subscription. All of us are worthy of hell. And the second you begin to accept this, my friends, you are 95% there. Now, I'm going to give you guys my testimony. I was with a woman for five years, of course, living in the world like the majority of you guys, fornicating, masturbating, drinking. I was very wrathful. I was very prideful. I was living in sin. And now I thought this was okay because this is what our world promotes. It tells us this is fine. You live your best life, sister. You keep on twerking. You keep on living in degeneracy. But it was only once she left that I enter this very vulnerable, open state. God knocked out my legs. You guys need to understand that the chief sin is pride. This is what casted out Satan from heaven. And every other sin becomes uh, exposed through this. And it was from that point when she broke up with me that I, I had this calling. The pride was gone, and I could feel God calling on my heart. And at that time, I was not a born-again Christian. In fact, I thought Christ was fake. I was told in Hollywood movies, TV, he's not real. Give it up. But still, I felt this calling. So what I did is I looked out my window and I said, whether I knew it or not, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. I have a feeling you're there. I can feel you tugging on my heartstrings. And whether I knew it or not, my friend, that is when I became born again. But I became born again because I humbled myself. You see, in our society, we were too prideful. We lean on our own understanding. You guys must understand that you are not atheist and secular by choice. This was force-fed down your throat. Don't believe me? Turn on the TV. Turn on the news. Turn on the media. Turn on your music. It's everywhere. It's not anti-Buddhism. It's not anti-Islam. It's anti-Christ. Every single person believes in God, for they have the, his law written in his heart. But we deny the truth by suppressing it with unrighteousness. When we live in sin, we are pushing Christ away. But my friends, he is always there. He wants to have a relationship with you. I understand in our Western world, this is a very hard concept to grasp. The majority of us now leaning on our own understanding, believing we're atheist, secular. You know, I got my degree in university. That's all a fairy tale. Meanwhile, Christ is the most documented historic person in the world. There were over 500 eyewitnesses and 25,000 manuscripts confirming his life, death, and keyword resurrection. But of course, our society will not tell you this. But if you guys, you want to know the truth? Look a little deeper. What does our society attack? What is it against? Well, I'll tell you. Marriage. Two genders. Right? What else? Anti-degeneracy. And if you really break it down, what does this come down to? The Bible. For the Bible cuts you open. It exposes your wickedness, just as it does myself. All of us are wicked. No man is good. And again, the wages of sin is death. So my friend, you can become born again. For in the end times, when you face Christ on your deathbed, he will either say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant, or depart from me, I never knew you. See, we have a lot of individuals who are religious. They go to church a couple times a week, and they think, therefore, my actions are good enough. No, my friends, that's exactly who Christ is speaking to. Your works mean nothing. We are not good people. All of us have fallen short. So again, guys, to become born again, here's what the gospel is. I want you all after this day to go home, close your door, pray to your father in secret so he can reward you openly. My friends, I know it sounds like a lot of times Christians are against individuals. You know, we're against gay people. We're against other religions. My friend, we've all fallen short. And in fact, this is a message of love. I'm Christian and I'm gay and my church accepts me. Well, then that is a fake, lukewarm church. And that, my friends, is the reason why Christianity gets mocked. We have so many fake church leaders that just glorify your sin. They tell you as long as you pay us once a week, you come to Easter church and give us a fat paycheck, they'll lie to you and tell you that you're going to heaven. But my friends, without the blood of Christ, being gay is a choice. I had no clue that was a woman. I thought that was a man. That's, that's rough. And I mean, that's why, you know, transgender is wrong because you guys say that gender
genders don't matter. But if, you're, but if you're a man or a woman, you try to look like the opposite sex. Of course they matter. My friends, we love you all. No amount of genital yep. mutilation yep. will ever make a woman out of a man. Amen. Makes you an man. Amen. Guys, we love all of you, but there are objective sins, and LGBTQ is one of them. How do you guys know this? The whole month is called Pride Month. That is the first of the sins on, on how Satan fell. But again, guys, the gospel message is a message of love. You see, Christ is not a respecter of man. God is not a respecter of man. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, what your accolades are. If you accept him, do you understand? Romans 10, 9, profess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and then believe in your heart. You shall be saved. It's as simple as that. I want you guys to go home and drop your pride. Ask God to reveal himself to you. Ask Christ to reveal himself to you. If there was anyone that was atheist, it was myself. If there was anyone that was secular, it was myself. I was into New Age. I was into atheism. But it's because I was leaning on my own understanding. That's what society was promoting. You guys like to think you're so smart that you somehow created atheism. That is the most degenerate baseline level knowledge you can think of. You guys believe that nothing blew up into everything? Absolutely not. For in the Bible, again, it states that God has written his law into all of our hearts. But we deny the truth by suppressing with unrighteousness. You are leaning on your own understanding. Everyone knows that Christ is alive. That made it a push. Say it again. Shut your mouth. Preach it No, sir. No, sir. You will go to hell if you do not accept Christ. Really? Amen. I'm yes. Going to hell because you say so. No, because no, God, God says so. No, God it's forgives. The says so. God forgives. You're he does forgive. God forgives, but that's only if you accept the blood of Christ. My friend, why are you so angry? You see, this because is what happens. Well, that, well, that's fine. We're, there is brotherly love. You are a fuck up. You're chastising all of us and shaming. No, sir. Fuck if you were listening, you heard you. that I said all of us have fallen short. I'll drink your fucking cooling. I'll go to you Jesus. see, this is what happens, guys. Demons get exposed yeah, right. by the word of How Christ. We love you all of you guys. Jesus. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God, but it vexes you because it cuts you deep. I drink your fucking Sinai Kool-Aid. Okay, guys, I think that's about done, eh? Yeah, I'm done in about five minutes. Just let this guy go. I think we're going to wrap it up now. Keep on preaching. Keep on preaching. I think we're about five minutes. I think we're going to wrap it up. You're a piece of fuck. Keep on preaching. Anyways, guys, the gospel message at the end of the day is a message of love. All you must do, guys, is go home, repent, and believe the gospel. Jesus, Luke, over here. Luke, what are you doing? Jesus Christ is a, I'll be done very soon, five minutes. Jesus Christ is alive. The Holy Spirit is real. You see, guys, unlike any other religion, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, there's no such thing as the Holy Spirit. Christ is alive and he can hear you. And what happens once you become born again is you take on his blood, his spirit. Do you understand? No, sir. Christ loves you. You're, and you're in a Christian country too, so how dare you say that? Try go, try going to, try going to Middle Eastern countries and saying that. No, sir. Amen. Christ is alive. He loves you all. And all you must do to become born again is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is alive. Guys, I know we lean on our own understanding, myself included. But once you get humbled and God knocks your legs down, you will be open to this. And once you gain the Holy Spirit, your sins become expiated. You no longer have to live by the law of Moses. You are now pure in Christ's eyes. And my friends, I want to make it very clear that this is the only way to enter heaven. There is no other way. For Christ says in John 14, 6, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. Not by Muhammad. Look at that. Of course, eh? Stop, stop. Buddy, stop. Stop, stop. Hey, stop. hey, I'm just trying to walk. Just stop. I'm no, just trying to walk here. I know, but this is insane. We know what you're up to. Uh, no, no. Anyways. Okay, are you going to have any use that? Right across the street. Is it salt? Okay, enough. I think we're done. Uh, we're not done, but is he allowed to do that? You know what? You guys are taking up the entire sidewalk. He's walking. No, we're this. not actually. We're over here. The gospel message is a message of love, my friends. But you must understand that it cuts us open. It exposes our sins. It exposes us for who we truly are. All of us, myself included, are wicked, wretched sinners. But without the blood of Christ and dropping our pride, we will surely perish. This is why.
So again, guys, to finish it here, because we love you all. Jesus Christ is Lord, but you will only accept him once you drop the pride. We live in a very prideful, secular, atheist society, and this was not by chance, but by design. Elites knew that if you can keep your pride, why would you ever accept Christ? But my friends, I pray for you today, for you to go home after this message. Matthew 6, 6. Close your door. Pray to your Father in secret so he can reward you openly. We love all individuals, including hecklers, including people who come against us, just as Christ did. But if you live in pride like these individuals, then surely you will likewise perish. We love you all. God bless. Have an amazing night.